We are here today in opposition to a recent proposal made to the state by an outside private health care consulting firm that would effectively close our general care hospital in Newport and replace it with a possible mental institution. The recommendation made by the Oliver Wyman consulting firm is the product of a report that is fundamentally flawed. It is based on incorrect data and the data that was provided was wrong and they were informed that it was wrong. In its proposal, the state deprived the Northeast Kingdom residents of their only primary care hospital. It represents horrendous republic policy. It's just not the way Vermonters have set out to take care of our children, our retirees, and our families in need of medical care. Sadly, it's a proposal that simply by its publication will hinder our efforts to grow our local economy. It will directly limit our ability to recruit and retain our medical professionals, our teachers, our firefighters, and municipal employees. It will discourage badly needed investment in our entire region. So we are calling on the administration, the governor, the Green Mountain Care Board, and the legislature to turn the proposal aside. It doesn't require deliberation and debate and long discussion in committee rooms. It's bad public policy. This proposal needs to be treated as dead on arrival. We in Newport feel so strongly and passionately about this issue that we decided to take our message out on the road. I am the mayor of the city of Newport. I am joined today by my fellow Newport City Council members, the president of the council, Chris Vachon, council member Clark Curtis. We are here with the CEO of the hospital, Tom Frank. We are joined by others from the North Country, and where it's administrators, medical professionals, employees, our former mayor, and so many of our community. We are here with students who are going to be our future professionals in the medical profession and other areas. So I am most buoyed by this turnout today of so many of our residents that they actually understand and believe in their hospital and they believe in the growth and revitalization of the economy in Newport. I'm stunned about some of the statements in the report, and this is just the report that we are talking about right now, okay? It appears that it kind of is a shill for the UVM Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Industrial Complex that has for years been hemorrhaging over limited healthcare dollars. Well, you know, we understand dollars are out there, but you do not eliminate a desperate lifeline to a city and a state because you need to choose one over the other. So please, don't get me wrong here. We do not mean to suggest that the Green Mountain Care Board or the governor or the legislature intended this result when it set aside $5 million to pay outside consultants to once again study why healthcare is so expensive in this sparsely populated state. We take at face value the words of our legislature when it calls for fundamental equity and fairness in the delivery of health care in every corner of our state. But now, having effectively given birth to this report, the legislature, the administration, and the Green Mountain Care Board need to say thank you, checks in the mail, but we're taking another path. We're not going to abandon the people of the Northeast Kingdom. There's no shortage of irony here. We in the Northeast Kingdom have been asked to serve as home of the state's only landfill, one that sits on one of the most beautiful lakes in our state. We've been asked to host a state prison. 
We were ravaged by J-Peak developers. We are a region that bases, bases its economy on agriculture. And like most agricultural regions, its residents face profound transportation challenges. We always have. The proposal being advanced to end the delivery of most primary care hospital services and to replace them with what is suggested in the report suggests that we in the kingdom ought to shoulder the burden of traveling hours, shuttling back and forth to remote medical centers to get our health care. Tell that to our retirees. Tell that to our moms and dads and children in need. Tell that to our employees and our business owners who have come to count on having our hospital located not in Burlington, not in Hanover, New Hampshire, but right here in the hub of our remote and isolated region, right in Newport, where it belongs. Yeah. This is not about, please, inconvenience to our residents. It's far more than that. It's the delivery of our health care, rightly described as one of our basic human rights. So if this is intended as part of health care 3.0 in Vermont, we say, no, thank you. Try again. If you want equity and fairness in the delivery of health care, this is a complete non-starter. Before becoming mayor, I served for six years in the legislature. Having worked within the halls and committee rooms of the State House, I know what gets done with these consultant reports. They are used to support all kinds of perverse outcomes by legislatures, legislators who may want to advance their own agendas and regional interests. After all, they say, we paid a lot of money for the study. After all, the experts are telling us what we need to do. Or even worse, we did a survey, and this is what the people want. Well, this is a particular concern when we suffer here in Vermont a legislative supermajority or a handful of political party types from our larger communities get to dictate public policy just by saying so. So my concern is not so much for the out-and-out -out closure of the hospital, but it's about the work behind the scenes over the next few years in the committee rooms of our State House at the Agency of Human Service and the Green Mountain Care Board. We are telling our friends here in Vermont that we need to be part of this. You cannot just go ahead and make idle decisions because it's the easy way to go. What we want to say is, we're watching, we will stay involved, and you can count on accountability at the ballot box if you get this wrong. Personally, my plan as the mayor of Newport is to attend and as appropriate, testify at committee meetings of the principal health care committees in the House and Senate. I intend to attend meetings of the Green Mountain Care Board and to request time to testify there too if appropriate, and when I can, I will be asking for time with the governor and members of his administration to advance our case. And my hope is that the CEO, Tom Frank, will be joining me in many of these meetings. We need help from our community in delivering our message. So there are many ways to do that through calls, letters, emails, even attendance at committee meetings. Ask to testify, buttonhole your legislator, our city legislators are strong and powerful and they are behind keeping this hospital open. We need to help them. They are a smaller voice in, than because we have a supermajority. So we need to stand behind our legislators as well. The Green Mountain Care Board is going to work with everybody. So is the administration. Their intent is to do the right thing. We need to let them hear our voice. So please, it works. So this is not a time for complacency, but it is actually a time for action.
our constituents and the professionals in our community are reaching out to us. I grow concerned and do not appreciate when our residents become alarmed due to news. I'm gonna up. I grow concerned and do not appreciate when our residents become alarmed due to news that is released to us in a particular way that is broken, incomplete, and inaccurate. I know that people are worried. Look at all the doctors and nurses who spoke passionately about this report and the recommendations and how they would compromise their ability to deliver the sort of world-class patient care that we are proud of. CEO Tom Frank and other professionals have made their statements loud and clear. They, among others, are the ones that know the faces of our residents. They are the ones that know firsthand that the needs of our communities. There are, there are those in Montpelier that suggest that we put a damper on what they consider to be overcharged rhetoric. They'd rather not be here today to look us in the eye to tell us the truth. Why is that? In my experience, community activism brings accountability for our public officials. Accountability is a heavy word, and it should be for those who represent us. We know that our Newport legislators are fighting for us, and together, we are going to give these folks a good dose of accountability. We will watch, we will listen, and we will be loud when we need to be. This isn't just gonna slide by everyone. We owe better for our children and loved ones. We are the legislative body of the city of Newport and we have our communities back. We're announcing here today the anticipation of this coming legislative session as your Newport City Council President, along with the mayor and my fellow council members, that we intend to form a citizen group to help coordinate the delivery of information and to sit in the community rooms to monitor the work of our lawmakers. This isn't a hospital initiative. It's being done by our constituents who are alarmed by the reckless delivery of an inaccurate report. One that's been dropped on our community without warning or forethought and how these recommendations would affect our city and our communities. And what is the purpose of this initiative? As said before, we will watch, we will listen, and we'll be very loud when we need to be. We look forward to hearing from our mayor as she continues to participate in conversations with the Agency of Human Resources, legislators, and Green Mountain Care Board members, as well as healthcare providers and hospitals in our constituency to seriously address the issues regarding feasibility, impact, and financial implications of the recommendations that will make sense for our Vermont communities and our residents of the Northeast Kingdom. Good morning. Thank you for coming. My name is, is it, is it on? It's on. My name is Clark Curtis, Newport City Council member. I'd like to speak to some points that the mayor has touched upon. Thank um, you. Want me to start over? Yeah. Good morning. I am Newport City Council member Clark Curtis and I would like to speak to some points that the mayor has touched upon, like our legislators and the Agency of Human Services to understand what it would mean for Newport and the surrounding area if, as a report recommended, the hospital converts all its inpatient beds to mental health, geriatric, psychiatry, and memory care and stop doing some different surgeries. That would clearly mean the hospital is, for all intents and purposes, closed. Right. You may have heard CEO Tom Frank and professionals from the hospital in press releases and at a community forum and in letters to the mayor and other leaders. I live near North Country High School and, and a little further from the city elementary school, but I see caravans of cars <coughs> filled with children and parents. We can easily drive and walk to the football games, and even as a council member serving in, a, in an official capacity, I come in contact with so many elements of our school system. We have, in so many ways, a vibrant and young community with children. The folks in Montpelier don't care enough for the NEK that it would effectively shut down the hospital, force seniors to travel hours for care, 
and just shrug. Too bad, so sad, my friends, but money talks. Health is a basic human right. Well, not where I decided <clears throat> to settle down. I've lived here my whole life, and I will stay here through my retirement years. North Country Hospital, as stated by CEO Tom Frank, made it clear in their 20 in their year 25 bus budget presentation to the Green Mountain Care Board that the hospital is the only critical access hospital in Vermont that meets all federal requirements to be considered critical access. According to the CEO, the report and recommendations do not take our remote and rural geographic location into consideration. Many in our community do not have their own transportation and there is a severe lack of in infrastructure and public transportation through the region. As the most rural hospital in the state with the most economically disadvantaged population, Act 167 clearly states access and health care equity need to be taken into consideration. However, in the report, their access and health care equity does not come into play. As the mayor indicated, this is merely a consultant's report and not an expert's report. This should only be taken as an opening, um, as an opening up for conversations. It should be taken only as an opening up for uh, more conversations. With the mayor and the council, we intend to be visible and we intend to be strong. Our community is the top priority to us and we understand that the Green Mountain Care Board regulates the rates on the hospitals and we are totally respectful of the sensitivity around these discussions. However, we cannot tiptoe around when it comes to the even remote possibility that our financial capable gem of a hospital that is the largest employer in our service area of Orleans and Northern Essex County with more than 600 employees and an estimated $61 million being poured back into the local economy annually. It's getting an inappropriate message sent to our community. North Country Hospital is strong. It is a viable organization that focuses on taking care of our patients and our community. So along with our local legislators, our mayor, and my fellow council members, and our community, I'm almost done. Yes, our community will take care of its own, and we will take care of North Country Hospital and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Tom Frank and I am the CEO at North Country Hospital. Uh, my family has had a home in that community since 1971. Uh, we are embedded and ingrained in that community and you can see and have heard how important our hospital is to our community. The Northeast Kingdom is a very unique area. It's very unique from the rest of the state. There are 2,000 square miles that make up the Northeast Kingdom. That's 21% of the total land mass in the state of Vermont. Folks travel over an hour just to reach our hospital from within the Northeast Kingdom. The, th the thought of our hospital going away and making those folks travel even greater distances, it's very simple. They will not seek care. This is an equity issue within the state of Vermont. We continually hear how important healthcare equity is for our state of Vermont but this report completely ignores that. You've heard from the folks here at the table and you've heard from me. We have the oldest population in Orleans County in the second oldest state in the country. We have the sickest population. We have the most economically challenged people who live in our community, who need care. <coughs> There's been talk through the report that we are in financial distress. That is not an accurate statement. Our hospital is one of the strongest financially sound institutions in the state due to the great work of the people who've lived in the Northeast Kingdom. Okay, we're true Yankees, okay? We only spend when we have to, <laughs> not because we want to. This report does not take anything into consideration outside of an opportunity 
to close and pick on, I would say, the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. It's already been heard about the industrial wind projects, the landfill, the prison. Uh, out of sight, out of mind, I don't think so. You can see here today, the community members who've turned out for this. If you saw our community forum last Thursday, the voices are being heard, guys. This report has gone too far. It has gone too far for the folks in the Northeast Kingdom, and we can't tolerate that. I've had the opportunity to meet with so many people in the state, from legislators to administrators, and there isn't one person who won't look me in the eye and say, it might have been a mistake for North Country Hospital. However, as I said before, the horse is out of the barn. We have to continue to be heard. I will assure you that we will continue to press the appropriate facts and present those to make sure that our hospital goes nowhere because I will tell you as I sit here today and I've said it before, North Country is not changing. North Country is not going away. It's too important to our community. It's too important to our residents. So thank you very much for listening to me today and I'm always happy to talk to the press or anyone that will listen to me. And thank you guys very much. So I want to thank everybody. Usually I don't need a microphone. I want to thank everybody for coming out and hearing our community speak because that's what's happening here. It is our community who is speaking to the state of Vermont. And we trust the state of Vermont. And we trust the administration. And we trust the legislators. But sometimes we have to join in and make sure that the path is the right path that's being taken. Thank you. Are we good? Can we? Are there any questions? I don't know. Well, they didn't ask, so that's why you're right. I guess that's up to you. You're the leader. Well, they didn't ask. ask. They couldn't. We all good? Answer for all of us. Oh, sure. My, <laughs> I can see the hand go up. So. <laughs> yeah, um, so you refer to, I think, what the UVM Jarvis Industrial Complex. I, I understand what you're saying. Uh, I'm wondering if you can expand on that a little bit in context of the report, which I will say was not very kind to UVM at all. In fact, I think the message was, you're way too expensive, you're way too inefficient, and you need to fix that and hire outside help. So why do you think that you should go to UVM? Think, think, think. Yeah, so, uh, so your question is correct. The report was not kind to very many of the hospitals. However, there was not a directive that said, let's close UVM and let's change them, when in fact the numbers, et cetera, that were provided by our hospital were inaccurate. So you can't just give directives like that. And I want to be very clear, this is just a consultant's report. And as somebody who is a troubleshooting turnaround specialist, unless you're in a court of law where it's a battle of the experts, there's no declaration of who the expert is here because it's just a self-serving report. And so when I say that, I say there's a competition, uh, it's a turf war of which hospital is going to get the better deal. And so I say don't rely on that report. Move that report out. Sit down and do it properly. And you need all the right people at the table. Can I make a comment? Of about course. UVM? So one thing I do want to say about the University of Vermont Medical Center, it, you know, we need UVM. We need a strong UVM. Um, you know, our, our patients need to have a tertiary care center in the state of Vermont. So there, there's no one up here that's not going to support the University of Vermont. Mm -hmm. And I agree what was done in the consultant support or recommended. We we're already feeling it. You know, they're going to have to pull back on services, whether we like that or not, which puts more strain on small community hospitals like North Country. So we are in full support of the University of Vermont Medical Center. I just want everyone to recognize that. This isn't a competition. It's really about working what's best for the citizens of Vermont and the Northeast Kingdom. And then, Tom, you've, I, I've talked to a lot of the same people that you've been talking to over the last week who are kind of saying the same thing, that maybe North Country was a bit of a mistake here. Um, but we're still here today. I mean, what do you need to hear to, to quell your fears that, that you're not going to be for Well, Mr. Flanders, that's, that's the problem. I don't believe that the folks in the state can come out and just say that because I think from a political perspective, it, it wouldn't be a good look. What we would need is we would need a statement from AHS 
that would say, yes, the report was an error with respect at least to North Country Hospital. Um, and I'm, I'm not saying that the other hospitals who were in the report with the, with the expectations they closed, I'm, I'm not so sure that was accurate either. You know, whenever you have a report, in my opinion, that recommends reducing direct patient access and care and increasing administration for the Green Mountain Care Board and AHS is fundamentally flawed. May I add something to that? So I think when you say, what do we need to hear? I agree with uh, Tom Frank. We need somebody to turn around and say that this message that we sent out, however it was delivered prematurely or not, or maybe it was sent out without being vetted one time again or having more conversations, has already driven what's going to happen. And so how do you pull that back? How do you, as alleged administrators, legislators, pull that back and save face? Well, this is more than saving face. It's about saving lives. And so there has to be a message, but the message that's been sent has already harmed not only our city, other areas that have these other hospitals that had directives be put in this report, but the people, the people of Vermont who rely on health services and need need to have those services. So it's a difficult pullback. So I think we need to throw that report out and we need to sit down with the powers that be and we really need to look at how do we fix the health care here. And it's not going to happen in one year or two years, but we need to have some serious conversations. Good. We're good. We're good. Thank you very much. Thank everyone. you all. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you.